Practicing NCLEX questions can be exhausting over time, but it is so helpful when it comes to reviewing for the next generation NCLEX. The way I approach the answers and rationale with each answer, it's a similar method you can use if you want to use my flashcards effectively. Unlocked Message Success Four must-know practice questions explain. After reviewing your NCLEX materials, it is essential to practice and answer some NCLEX questions. Come join me and let's answer four medical surgical questions in this video. Stay tuned for my rationales that will help you retain information for your upcoming nursing or the next generation NCLEX. Pro tip, you can pause this video as needed so you can come up with your answer prior to listening for the rationale. Question 1. Nurse Jojo is providing care for a 63-year-old male who was diagnosed with Addison's disease. What type of treatment should she expect the patient to have? A. Dialysis B. Insulin and glucose C. Blood transfusion and oxygen or D. Hormone replacement therapy and fluids for shock. Okay, and the correct answer is D. Hormone replacement therapy and fluids for shock. So let's go over the rationale for this correct answer. Hormone replacement therapy and fluids for shock are treatments for Addison's disease. Addison's disease affects the adrenal glands, causing them to not produce enough cortisol and aldosterone. An example of hormone replacement therapy for Addison's disease is hydrocortisone, which replaces the missing cortisol. The first step is understanding how Addison's disease affects the adrenal glands. The second step is understanding why hormone replacement therapy is necessary for Addison's disease. If there are not enough cortisol and aldosterone being produced, which are hormones produced by the adrenal glands, then the treatment would be hormone replacement therapy. If the patient experiences Addison's crisis, fluids for shocks would be required. Also, a patient with Addison's disease would experience dehydration and fluids may be needed. A patient diagnosed with Addison's disease would have increased thirst and would urinate frequently. Knowing the signs and symptoms would help one understand that fluids need to be added for someone with Addison's disease. The analysis treatments are for those with renal failure. Insulin is used to treat hyperglycemia. Glucose is used to treat hypoglycemia. Insulin and glucose would not be given together at the same time. Blood transfusion and oxygen are used to treat anemia, which causes someone to have shortness of breath and a lack of healthy red blood cells. NCLEX tip. A great way to remember what is the treatment for Addison's disease is that one must add hormones if one has Addison's disease. Question number two. Which of the following inflammatory bowel disorder causes inflammation in the colon and rectum? A. Diverticulitis. B. Ulcerative colitis. C. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is GERD. Or D. Gastric ulcer. So if you have paused and you thought about it and you got to the correct answer, it is B, ulcerative colitis. And good job if you got that one correct. The rationale for this is that the ulcerative colitis starts at the rectum and ascends towards the colon causing an inflammation. Systemic complications can occur, which contributes to the increasing mortality rate with ulcerative colitis. Rectal bleeding, Blood and diarrhea, weight loss, and abdominal cramping are signs and symptoms seen in ulcerative colitis. This chronic inflammatory bowel disorder can affect the patient for years or for a lifetime. If someone is experiencing rectal bleeding, bloody diarrhea, then one can associate those symptoms with abdominal cramping. Someone who is experiencing diarrhea may be experiencing weight loss due to the loss of fluid. To diagnose ulcerative colitis, a colonoscopy or sigmoidoscopy may be ordered by the physician. Anti-inflammatory and antibiotics are used to treat ulcerative colitis. Diverticulitis 
GERD, and gastric ulcer does not cause inflammation in the colon and rectum. Diverticulitis is an inflammation that occurs from food and bacteria getting trapped in the diverticula. GERD occurs when stomach content ascends back up into the esophagus. This experience, known as acid reflux, occurring more than twice a week, can indicate GERD. Gastric ulcer is not an inflammatory bowel disorder. Erosion in the gastric mucosa indicates gastric ulcer. NCLEX tip to remember that ulcerative colitis affects the rectum and colon. Know that the letters REC is in the word rectum and in ulcerative, but backward. The letter COL is in the word colon and colitis. So we just went over two practice NCLEX questions. The way I approach the answers and rationale with each answer is a similar method you can use if you want to use my flashcards effectively. You can download a sample of 160 free digital flashcards when you go to cutienurses.com to join my email list. Don't forget to click that red subscribe button below. Now, let's continue on to question number three. Nurse Jojo is assessing the 65 years old patient who is receiving Meperidine, which is also known as Demerol, via patient control analgesia, which is PCA, to relieve pain post-total knee replacement, which is the following assessment finding should be reported to the physician. A, respiratory rate of 10 breaths per minute. B, pain score of 8 to over 10, C, pulse rate of 110 beats per minute, or D, respiratory rate of 22 breaths per minute. So I'll give you some time. This is where you're going to pause, and then you get to the correct answer, which is A, respiratory rate of 10 breaths per minute. And good job if you got it correct. And that's totally okay if you didn't get it correct, because that's what my rationales are for. Respiratory rate of 10 breaths per minute is an assessment finding that should be reported to the physician if the patient is taking Demerol. The normal breath rate should be between 12 to 20 breaths per minute. A respiratory rate of 22 breaths per minute is a little bit higher than the normal breath rate, but would not be considered an assessment finding that needs to be reported to the physician. Demerol is a controlled substance that is used to treat moderate to severe pain. This pain-relieving medication has a high risk for respiratory distress and can cause death when the dose is too high. Someone reporting a pain score of 8 out of 10 would be expected for someone who recently went through a total knee replacement, which is why Demerol is being administered in the first place. A normal pulse rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. Tachycardia would be expected for someone who is experiencing pain. NCLEX tip. If two of the answers are exact opposite, one of the two is probably the correct answer. So now we're going to move on to the final question, number four. Myopia, astigmatism, and hyperopia are examples of what type of eye disorder? A. Intraocular disorders. B. Traumatic injury. C. Retinal disorder. Or D. Refractive errors. And now we're going to pause, think about it, and select the correct answer. And now the correct answer is D, refractive errors. And if you get that one correct, then good job. And now let's go over the rationale as to why D is the correct answer. Myopia, astigmatism, and hyperopia are examples of refractive errors, which occurs when the eye is not able to see clearly due to the shape of the eye not being able to bend the light correctly. Blurry vision and headaches are common complaints associated with refractive errors. Myopia is nearsightedness. Objects that are nearby are clear. Objects far away are blurry. Concave lens correct this type of refractive errors. Astigmatism causes blurry vision at both near and far distance. The light rays is refracted unequally due to this uneven surface of the cornea. If the cornea is not completely round, blurry vision is affected at all 
distance. Hyperopia is farsightedness. Objects far away are clear. Objects that are nearby are blurry. Convex lens correct this type of refractive error. Cataract and glaucoma are examples of intraocular disorders, eye disorders that occur inside the eyeball. Macular degeneration and hypertensive retinopathy are examples of retinal disorders, which are eye disorders that affect the innermost eye layer. Contusions, laceration, and foreign bodies are examples of traumatic injury, which occurs from external factor causing injury to the eye or eyes. Only an ophthalmologist should be remove objects that are protruding from the eye to prevent greater damage to the eye. So practicing NCLEX questions can be exhausting over time, but it is so helpful when it comes to reviewing for the next generation NCLEX. If you haven't already, you can check out my flashcard and study guide bundle for the NCLEX at qdnurses.com which will help you prepare for your exam. If you're not already subscribed, click the red button below.